today, today we're talking about I will always trust God. Oh, ha, ha, ha. But first, it's time to do some worship. So jump up on your feet and let's worship Jesus together. Are you ready? Here we go. And do what he says. Oh, God is so good to us. Hmm. What? That's right. It's time for the 60 second scripture find. Quick, grab your Bibles. Because it's time right now. Quick, grab the big rescue Bible. Because it's now time to play the 60 second scripture find. Find. 
Okay, grab your Bibles, because today we're going to look up a scripture. Are you ready? You have 60 seconds to look it up and see if you can beat the clock. Today's scripture is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Your time starts now. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. With all your heart you must trust the Lord and not your own understanding. Always let him lead you, and he will clear the road for you to follow. Oh, how did you go? Did you find the scripture today? Was it a bit tricky? Mm, sometimes it is, but if you keep practicing, you'll get faster. And it's really important to be able to find the things in the Bible, because God says special things in there that we can find and live our life by. Right now, it's time for today's lesson. You're going to love it. It's about David and how he found out he could always trust God. And we can always trust God too. Jam lesson. I will always trust God. Have you ever had to do something that at the start you thought was impossible? Can you ride a scooter? Do you remember when you learned to ride a scooter? Did you pray and ask God to help you? You can ask God for help with whatever you are facing. At first it was hard, but now it's easy. Can you ride a bike? Do you remember when you learnt to ride your bike? Did you pray and ask God to help you? You can ask God for help with whatever you're facing. At first it was hard, but now it's easy. Can you drive a car? No. Do you think it would be fun or scary? Well, when you get older, you will have to choose to start to learn how to drive so you can eventually get your driver's license. You can ask God for help with whatever you are facing, no matter what the situation or how young or old you are. Today, we're going to look at a story in the Old Testament of the Bible about a young shepherd boy who would eventually become king, David. Today's Bible story comes from 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 1 to 50. Chapter 17, Goliath Challenges the Israelites. The Philistines now mustered their army for battle and camped between Soko in Judah and Azekah at Ephesdanim. Saul countered by gathering his Israelite troops near the Valley of Elah. So the Philistines and Israelites faced each other on opposite hills, with the valley between them. Then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet, and his bronze coat of mail weighed 125 pounds. He also wore bronze leg armor, and he carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's beam, tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. His armor-bearer walked ahead of him, carrying a shield. Goliath stood and shouted a taunt across to the Israelites. Why are you all coming out to fight? He called. I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. Jesse sends David to Saul's camp. 
Now David was the son of a man named Jesse, an Ephrathite from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. Jesse was an old man at that time, and he had eight sons. Jesse's three oldest sons, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shimei, had already joined Saul's army to fight the Philistines. David was the youngest son. David's three oldest brothers stayed with Saul's army, but David went back and forth so he could help his father with the sheep in Bethlehem. For forty days, every morning and evening, the Philistine champions strutted in front of the Israelite army. One day Jesse said to David, Take this basket of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread, and carry them quickly to your brothers, and give these ten cuts of cheese to their captain. See how your brothers are getting along, and bring back a report on how they are doing. David's brothers were with Saul and the Israelite army at the Valley of Elah, fighting against the Philistines. So David left the sheep with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with the gifts, as Jesse had directed him. He arrived at the camp just as the Israelite army was leaving for the battlefield with shouts and battle cries. Soon the Israelite and Philistine forces stood facing each other, army against army. David left his things with the keeper of supplies and hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. Then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the army of Israel. As soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? The man asked. He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife, and the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. David asked the soldier standing nearby, What will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway, that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? And these men gave David the same reply. They said, Yes, that is the reward for killing him. But when David's oldest brother Eliab heard David talking to the man, he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway? he demanded. What about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. What have I done now? David replied. I was only asking a question. He walked over to some others and asked them the same thing and received the same answer. Then David's question was reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. David kills Goliath. Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into a shepherd's bag. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield-bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. David was friends with God. David had asked God to help him while he was looking after the sheep. God had taught David how to defeat the lions and the bears that had tried to attack the sheep. David knew he could trust God. David knew he could trust God to defeat Goliath. Do you remember? How many stones did David pick up from the stream? Five stones. And we're going to use these stones to remember, I will always trust God. What weapon did David use to kill the giant? A sling. When we face big situations or problems that seem to be like giants, we can be like David. We can pray. We can ask God for help. We can take up the five stones and remember, I will always trust God. And we will see God give us victory over the difficult situations. Watch this.
Crazy King Saul has gotten us in way over our heads fighting the Philistines. Hey, he's just under a lot of pressure now. Plus, he's the first king we've ever had. What do you think? Another prophet is just going to appear and anoint a new better king from out of nowhere? <laughs> <laughs> At least we won. Let's get you a Band-Aid. God, we really need a new king. Hello! God has sent me to find a new king. Please, present to me your sons. And if any is right for the position, God will send me the message so that I may anoint him with the oil in this horn. Wait a sec, you're the prophet Samuel, right? Oh, this is great. Sons? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No, not that one. No, nah, Ooh, not him. Is that all? That can't be it. Well, there's David. He's out with the sheep. Not exactly the king type. Hello, David. The Lord has chosen you to be king. <sighs> Me? Mm. Before you know it, all of Israel shall call you king. Uh, does the current king know this? Father, stop this madness at once. It's like an evil spirit has taken control of him. Oh, save me, please. Maybe some calming music would do the trick? It's worth a try. Bring me the best. Whoa, nice digs. to your brothers on the battlefield. Really? You'll let me go into battle? Yes. I believe you'll be a wonderful delivery boy. But we could use a timeout. So this is King Saul's army. This is what it's like to be a brave soldier at war. Uh, Brave-ish. <laughs> David, what are you doing here? This battle is too dangerous for a shrimp like you. So you don't want any of this food. Well, we didn't say that. Uh, mm, <laughs> What was... I am Goliath of Gut. Israelites! Oh, yeah! I issue this challenge. He's issuing a challenge! Send a champion to me! Any champion will do! And I shall fight him one on one! Mano e mano! If I win, take them down. You will become slaves to the Philistines. Oh, <laughs> and if one of us wins, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're serious? Oh, wow. Uh, well, I, I guess in that case, we'd be your slaves. But uh, 
but none shall ever be beat. What did you do that for? None of us can beat Goliath. He's, well, he's Goliath. Oh, we're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. What do you think you're doing? I'm gonna take down that Philistine. What? Anybody who goes near that guy is dead meat for sure. Good point. I'll make sure not to get too close. That kid is so familiar. Have I met him before? No, oh, either way. Where does he think he's going? He said he's going to challenge Goliath. That little guy? Woo -woo -woo? Your Majesty? When one of my father's sheep is taken off by a predator, I rescue it. And when it attacks me, I strike it down. God has saved me from lions and bears, and God is on my side now. Oh, uh, well, uh, at least take my armor. Nah, I'll be right back. Hey, are you guys gonna send somebody over here, or what? Uh, just a minute! You know, there's a lot riding on this. Are we sure this is the best idea? I'm not sure, but I have faith. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Goliath! What is that? Is that a stick? You can't be serious! What are you going to do? Play fetch with me like a little dog? <laughs> You're making this way too easy! Send someone with a real weapon! You may be big and strong, but there are things more powerful in this world than you. Trust God. I, I, I can always trust God. I can always trust God. And you can always trust God too. I hope you've had fun today. It's been a great lesson at Jam Online. We'll see you next time. Bye! Shine, 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 you're my God. Shine, 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 shine.